Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to build a responsive fixed sidebar with smooth scrolling anchor links with Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. Okay, so before we get started, let's go through the things that we're going to need in order for us to achieve this tutorial. So first of all, we're going to need Divi, of course. Secondly, we're going to need to use the recipes page from the food recipes layout pack. And this is freely accessible from the Divi builder. Finally, we're going to be using some CSS snippets. So all this will be found in the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. All right, so let's start off by creating a brand new page. So I'm just going to come over here, click on add new. So we're going to give this page a name. We're going to call this a responsive fixed sidebar. And then I'm going to click on use the Divi builder, choose pre-made layout. So now I'm going to find the food recipes. So I'm just going to click here on food and drink to just narrow these down. And then I'm going to click on the food recipes layout pack. And the page that we're going to need here is the food recipes. So I'm going to click on it and then click on use this layout. Next, I'm going to click on build from the front end. Right, so the next stage is to add a brand new section. So I'm going to click this plus button here, add a regular section. And in that section, we're going to have a single column. All right, so I'm just going to close this for now. And then what we need to do next is to drag this section all the way to the top. So I'm going to hold one of the handles here and drag it all the way to the top, just like that, and let go. Next, we're going to come over here to the bottom. We need to copy this button here and add it onto this row. So I'm going to duplicate it and then just drag it over here. All right. So what we need to do next is to add some CSS code to this button. So I'm going to come over here to my module settings, click on advanced, custom CSS. And on the main element, I'm going to add this CSS code. So what the CSS code does is it just makes this page fill the width of that row. Right, so let's give this button a title. So I'm going to come back over here to content, text, and then we're going to change this to introduction. And then for the link, we are going to add a pound sign and the word introduction. So this pound or the hashtag tells the browser where you're going to be linking the CSS ID. Right, so for now, I'm going to go ahead and save. So what you need to do next is to uh, duplicate this a few times and create a few buttons. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that right now. And then I'm going to go into my module settings. Now this button here is going to be called ingredients. So we need to change this wording. And then for the link, you need to add the pound sign and ingredients. So that's what you need to do to the remainder of the buttons and then save. Now that we have all our buttons created and the anchor links in place, we are now ready to add the corresponding CSS ID names to the sections and the rows. So what these anchor links will do is when you click the button, it will automatically jump to the section that corresponds with that CSS ID. So let's start with the introduction button here. So we're going to scroll down to the section that needs that we need to navigate to after clicking the button. So it's this section that we need here. So what we're going to do here is to go into the section settings and then we're going to come to the advanced tab, click on CSS ID and classes. And under the CSS ID, we need to add this word introduction. So when we click the button, this should jump onto this section right away. So I'm going to go ahead now and save. Right, so let's move on to the next button. So the next button here is the ingredients button. So we need to scroll down here to the actual row that has the ingredients. So I'm going to click here in the row settings, advanced tab, CSS ID and classes. And then on, under the CSS ID, I'm going to add my ID of ingredients and then save. Next, we need to go to the nutrition section. So over here, I'm going to click on my section settings, advanced, CSS ID and classes. And then under CSS ID, I'm going to add nutrition and then save that. Finally, we need to go to the section with the step-by-step uh, -step instructions. And it's right here. Again, we're going to click here on our section settings, click on advanced, CSS ID and classes. And then I'm going to add my CSS ID. I'm going to save that. 
Right, so let's check and see if our anchor links are working. So I'm going to save the page and then I'm going to exit the Visual Builder. Right, so let's test our buttons now. So I'm going to click here on Introduction and you can see here that it's taken us to the Introduction part. Ingredients. That's taking us to the Ingredients. Nutrition. So it seems like everything is working okay. And then finally, the Instructions. It's taking us to the instruction part. So this is fantastic. But do you notice that every time I click one of these links, we don't have a way of navigating here on the left. So this is what we're going to do next because every time we need to click another link, we have to scroll back to the top and then do that. So let's go ahead and fix that. So we're going to be creating a fixed sidebar layout. So the first thing we need to do is to add some space on the left side of each section. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to start off with this um, section here, but before I can do that, I need to enable the Visual Builder first. So I'm going to start off with this section. So I'm going to click here on Section Settings, Design, Spacing, and then I'm going to add a margin of 20% to the left. So because we're going to be applying this margin to the rest of the sections, the quickest way to save us time is to just right click on uh, over here, copy custom margin, save this, and then we're going to add that custom margin to the rest of the sections. So I'm going to paste custom margin and you can see here that the margin has been applied. So we're going to continue and do that to the rest of the sections. Now let's go back to the all the way to the top and give some CSS code to this top section. So I'm going to click here on section settings, click on advanced, and then on custom CSS, I'm going to go to the main element and paste this CSS code. So you can see here, as soon as I've pasted it, this is now uh, taken our links over here to the left. But uh, if you want to use the same CSS code as I'm using in this tutorial, I will leave a link in the show notes below. So now I'm going to go ahead and save and that's, that's our sidebar. So now if I click on these buttons, we should be able to navigate this nice and easy. Okay. So uh, before we continue, what we need to do here is to quickly check and see if this design looks great on a small, on a phone view. So if I click here, we notice that our sidebar here doesn't look great on a mobile device. So let's go ahead and fix that. So I'm going to click here back on my desktop view. We're going to go into our row settings, design, sizing. So what we need to do here is to make sure that we set our width to use custom width. And then over here, we need to change our units to percentage and then drag this all the way to 100%. Now let's go to our spacing and set our custom padding. So for our custom padding, we're going to set a 10% to the left and 10% to the right. So I'm just going to add here this chain so that my size is applied to both sides. Now we're going to make some adjustments to our tablet view. So I'm going to click here on this little icon, click on tablet. But this time on the tablet, this needs to be set to zero on both sides. So finally, all we have to do now is to save this. Okay, so now that we're done with our settings, let's go ahead and take a look at this design. So I'm going to click here on Exit Visual Builder. And now if I click on introduction, this takes us to the introduction section, ingredients, nutrition, and instructions. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.